All right, so we're back in business. I've been uh, away from doing these videos for a little while. Um, COVID got in the way, I guess. Um, my hair is a little longer than the last time I shot these. Gonna work on that in another week or so, just at the barber. But in the meantime, we're gonna get some videos done. We're moving on to the vectors chapter. We're gonna talk space coordinates to start. Uh, and then we're gonna move on, talk about vectors, lines, planes, uh, other things as we move forward. So, uh, the idea here when we talk about space coordinates is we, we mean three-dimensional space coordinates, right? We want to work in 3D. So we know what the 2D picture looks like. All right, so in two dimensions, we draw this usual coordinate system, right? We're all very used to this x-axis, y-axis, and when we plot a point in this coordinate system, right, we label it with our coordinates, let's say x and y, and we're reasonably familiar with what these two numbers mean, right, x and y, what are they? Well, they measure the distances between that point and the two coordinate axes, right? Uh, the length of this side is x, right, so this point down here is x zero, right. and the length of this side is y, so this point here right, has coordinates zero and y. Um, and now we want to extend this into three dimensions. We want to start talking about motion in space, right? We live in a three-dimensional world, so we want to be able to do three-dimensional mathematics, right? We want to be able to, to move, you know, backwards and forwards. We want to move right, left, that might look like left and right on the video because it's mirrored, not sure. Anyway, right? And, and also we want to be able to do up and down. Or down and up, I guess. Uh, right? And so how do we do that? Well, one of the ways that we tend to do this is we just, we just add one more coordinate axis. Now, this is a two-dimensional surface, so we have to kind of use perspective drawing to indicate that third coordinate, right? We, we can't quite do 3D in in full accuracy, but we can just do something like this. We just draw another axis at an angle and imagine it's sort of coming out of the board. Right? And that's one way that we can do it. Uh, and then when we want to plot a point, right, um, rather than thinking about, you know, say a point x, y in two-dimensional coordinates, now I might have some point in space, and so we have a point there. And and now what I can do is I can think about, well, I have three coordinate axes now that I want to measure the location with respect to, right? And so I can think about sort of dropping something down this way, right? I can think about measuring going across and say like that, parallel to the various axes. And I can think about the points that I get here. Here, here, we can think about what those represent. In fact, we can go a little bit further. We can actually think about, well, we can, just like we have a rectangle in two dimensions, we can draw ourselves a box, a rectangular box in three dimensions. So we can sort of draw that up just like so. All right, we can see the three dimensional box and we can think about the locations of the various coordinates, right? Um, and so we can think about, well, now this here, that length is still going to be y, right? Uh, but now this distance kind of coming out this way, right, that's, that's now z, right? So we have x, y, and z as coordinates, um, and we can draw it like that, okay? So, so then this point here, right, along the z axis, z is equal to zero, so this would be like x, um, what would that be like x, y? Sorry, that's um, x and y are both zero. Zero, zero, z, right? This point over here would be x, zero, zero. Um, and we can find, you know, still where does it hit the y axis up there somewhere, roughly the same as it was before, right? So that's now going to be not just zero, y, but zero, y, and and zero, it'll look something like that, right? We have to add the x or coordinate. Um, okay, so we can, we can just do it like that, although for, for whatever reason, 
Um, now, this is one way that people will draw this coordinate system with z sort of coming out of the board like that. Uh, but we tend to kind of prefer to draw z going up, right? So usually what we do is we draw our coordinate system like this. And we imagine we're looking at like a corner of our room. And so now we think of z as like the up down. We think of like xy, the xy plane is like the floor, right? And z is our up down. And we draw coordinate axes. And we don't necessarily draw both positive and negative. We tend to just draw the positive coordinate axes. And we do something like this. So draw a picture like that. And you imagine that you're looking at, you know, like I said, a corner of a, of a room, right? Looking at the floor. This is the floor. Here's a wall. Here's another wall. You can see the corner. Um, and, and in this layout here, we can talk about the x, y, z axes labeled as such. Um, now, there are some of these concerns about, oh, is it a left-handed coordinate system, right-handed coordinate system? Uh, we want right-handed coordinate systems wherever possible. Uh, and there are various ways that you can try to figure out what this means. Um, now, again, because I'm shooting a, like a video and it's mirrored, I mean, my right hand might look like my left hand to you. And so this might, like, the, these right hand rule tests might not work so well in this format. Um, but generally, you kind of want to think of this sort of like, you know, counterclockwise if you think about like the usual sort of positive orientation for a circle as you go around. And, you know, you should go sort of x, y, z, right? In that sort of increasing order. And you see the same thing over here x, y, z going around. Um, okay? So that's, uh, that's sort of the, the picture. And again, if you want to locate a point in space, now I think one of the ways we can do this, which I think works a little bit better, um, we want to think of this point as having coordinates, say, x, y, and z. And you can think about dropping that down. Imagine it's sort of shadow on the floor, right? The floor being the x, y plane. So you drop it down to, say, somewhere down here. And we get a point, say, um, x, y, and 0. Right? And then we can also think about, you know, moving horizontally over to the x-axis. So now we would have x, 0, 0 there. Right? So this distance from here uh, to here, that's actually y, right? This vertical distance is your z. And we could also move parallel to the x-axis until we reach the y-axis, right? And we get the point over here of 0, y, 0. And that distance there is x, right? And so just like we did over there, we can also, if you want, you can construct sort of the box to give you sort of more of this sort of illusion that this is a three-dimensional picture, something like that, to try and give you an idea of where that point is in space. Um, OK, so that's kind of the, the basic idea of the coordinate system, how we think about points in space. We're going to talk about distance in the next video. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, um, it is very hard to draw three-dimensional pictures by hand which are accurate and also kind of, you know, readable, visible. Um, it's really hard to do. Right? Once we get into, say, multivariable calculus and you start looking at surfaces, um, there are some tricks that you can use to draw these the surfaces in three dimensions so that they look nice and you can sort of see what's going on. Um, but when it comes to things like trying to draw like a line segment in space, um, in perspective with a court, like it's, if you try to do it accurately, um, you know, representing all the coordinates that are supposed to be on that line, like you try to actually get the numerical values in there, it's always a disaster, right? So we tend to draw sort of representative diagrams, almost cartoon pictures. We don't try to be 100% accurate um, because the, the numerical accuracy of our drawings uh, tends to sabotage any attempt at making a picture that is, is readable and, and easy to look at. Um, so we'll see that as we go on. Sometimes we'll, we'll sort of do simplified drawings that are easy to understand uh, rather than more detailed drawings that are maybe technically more accurate because those detailed drawings typically are not very nice to look at.